We, the Delta Command, do hereby set in motion the principles of this document, the summa modus operandi of the Chaos Insurgency. We hold the following to be inescapable truths. The Foundation Overseers have altered the fabric of reality for the benefit of their own wicked desires. These alterations are the source of all supernatural activity in our universe. These grievances we hold against them. The Seventh Overseer has manipulated innocent populaces to create chaos and destruction for the Foundation's benefit, and has shown nothing but contempt and malfeasance against the innocent and unwitting. The Sixth Overseer has surreptitiously used the might of the American military machine to crush the Foundation's enemies and wrought a tale of never-ending violence and bloodshed that has forever stained this world. The Fifth Overseer has warped the very boundaries between space and time to extend the Foundation's cruel reach and taken dark and horrible secrets from those far-off places to use them to fuel the Foundation's death machine. File Number 001-7 057 Green Caucasian female British German ancestry appears to be in her early 50s the first member of the council voted into it rather than appointment by 051 after the previous 057 was determined to be no longer useful by the rest of the council is believed to have at one point been a site director though any records of this have long since been modified or outright removed. Regardless, it is believed that 057 has been working within the Foundation nearly her entire life, having joined as an administrative aide when she was only 14. Has become the apparent leader of the Council, and controls a considerable amount of authority in that position, while a veto from 051 could theoretically subvert her assumed control, that veto has never occurred. Perhaps the most often seen member of the Council, she attained the name Green due to her nearly always being seen in green pantsuits. Some high-level sources within Foundation staff have another name for her. Flytrap. Often described as the most sinister member of the Council. While other members might have diabolical intentions or ulterior motives, 057 alone has the authority to make everything she intends to happen come to pass. She is often described as working towards some end, though her goals are a mystery. Journal Entry The Seventh Overseer They call her Green. In my travels, I have had an audience with many of the higher-ups and many of the organizations that deal with the paranormal in this world. In one such case, I sat in on a meeting with a Russian intelligence director and a high-ranking member of the Global Occult Coalition. In this meeting, it was being discussed whether or not action would be taken by the GOC to prevent the Foundation from furthering their influence in Syria, as a powerful humanoid entity had just been discovered there, and steps were being taken by many different groups to step in and intervene. It was thought that this entity was likely being targeted by the Foundation, though it was uncertain how far along their plans have progressed. In this meeting, the Russian director assured the GOC commander that they have the full support of Russian paramilitary forces in the region, a full 20,000 men, if needed. The coalition had a contingent of their own, another 25. It was more than enough force to bring any entity to bear, especially if they could get the jump on the Foundation. During this meeting, the Russian director stepped out to take a phone call and when he returned, the Russians had decided to withdraw their troops from the area. The Coalition commander was furious, of course, but his rage quickly abated when the director told him why they had changed their mind. Green is in Syria. One woman, alone, had entered the country and sent two of the largest paranatural communities scurrying for their bunkers. The meeting ended shortly afterward, and all involved parties left without much else said. I asked a staffer afterwards what the significance of Green was, as I was a fresh-faced agent at the time and had not yet been informed. Green, they asked me. 
Green is the devil that sits on the Overseer Council. I learned, over time, that her reputation barely scratched the surface of her influence. More than any other member of the Overseer Council, Green's name came up most frequently when matters of the Foundation's involvement in the affairs of the world were discussed. When a government would collapse in South America, and the CIA was implicated, her name would somehow end up on all the dossiers. A ship that capsized in the South Atlantic would have her name on the manifest. Once, there was an explosion at a chemical plant in Bangladesh, and while combing through photographs of the cleanup, whose face do I see in the background but green? Always present, always watching, carefully planning. Speculation abounded, of course. Everyone in every paranormal investigatory group thought they knew her endgame. The Coalition thought she was in league with the Factory. The UIU figured she was working for Curvier. The Russians thought she was in the Scarlet King. Even my contacts in the Hog had her name connected to drug lords in Mexico, dictators in Africa, and telecom groups in Indonesia. Despite this, nobody could ever clearly put together where the center of her web was. A close friend of mine who died years ago once called her the Spider and warned me she was the closest of them all to the Foundation's all-seeing eye. They warned that getting too close to the center of the web would put a person within reach of the spider, and by then, it would be too late. But another contact of mine told me a different name, one mentioned in hushed tones around water coolers within the Foundation itself. The Fly Trap. Not a web, but a trap for those too dumb or instinctive to seek out its hidden secrets. Once you were in, snap. In my career, I tried to give Green a wide berth. Every time I saw her name connected to someone, it was because they had died suddenly or been involved in some terrible or inexplicable accident. Even I know my limits, and I was not eager to become involved with someone who could cause such powerful groups to cower in fear. Despite this, I did once meet her, on accident. I was at a luncheon, hosted by the Tunisian government, and ran into her when I went back to the bar to get another drink. There she was, pantsuit and all, enjoying an old-fashioned and watching a television show. When I came up and ordered, she turned to me and smiled a friendly smile and shook my hand. She introduced herself, telling me to just call her Green. When I gave her my code name as a cover, she winked at me and said, Honey, we both know that's not true. I paid for my drink, wished her well, and left the meeting immediately. That was the closest I ever hoped to come to the mouth of the flytrap. End of entry. File number 001-6-056. The American. Caucasian male. Spanish ancestry, appears to be in his mid-fifties. The least subtle member of the Council, 056 is former American Union Brigadier General Rufus King. After fighting for the North in the American Civil War, 056 was appointed as Minister to the Papal States, believed to have first met the individual called the Administrator while in Rome. The source of his longevity prior to the supposed deal with death itself is unknown, and if the current understanding of the Council is correct, then despite his appearance, he is by far its oldest member. 056 is believed to have founded the first mobile task force, Alpha-1, Red Right Hand, whose original purpose was strictly to find and destroy members of the fledgling Chaos Insurgency after their formation. Since then, he has administered all matters of the Foundation's executive arm the Department of Applied Influence, encompassing all task forces, naval groups, and air superiority groups. While not originally advocating for its formation, 056 supposedly drew up the original organizational information for MTF Omega-7, Pandora's Box, at the behest of General Bowie, has gone by several different names within modern military circles, and is believed to have held an office at the Pentagon since its construction. His standing within the American military is unknown, 
Though at least three major sources have confirmed that many military leaders consider his authority second only to the sitting United States President, and several believe he supersedes it. Journal Entry The Sixth Overseer There's really little to be said about the overseer they call the American. Once upon a time, he was American Civil War General Rufus King, who somehow escaped the hand of fate long before he ever had a sip from the Fountain of Youth or entered into any contract with death. Nobody seems to know how he did this, and strangely, nobody seems to care. If you want to find him, he has an office in the Pentagon. His official title is Special Counsel to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and his office is on the fourth floor. I have had numerous run-ins with him, and believe me when I say that each has been as distasteful as the last. That said, I once witnessed him open a beer with the end of a whip, then use that same whip to grab the beer across the room and finish it in a single swallow. It was remarkable. End of entry. File number 001-5 055 Blackbird Male British Moroccan Ancestry Age Uncertain Generally regarded as the most jovial members of the council, is not afraid to be seen joking in public. Has often commented that he believes the dark curtain between Overwatch Command and the rest of the Foundation, as well as the unnecessary seriousness of the council itself, are a preposterous and often detrimental joke. Despite this, there are several incongruities surrounding 055. Some sources have indicated that they believe they have heard 055 talking to himself, as if he were having a conversation, while others have described conversing with 055 and then speaking to him again shortly afterwards and feeling as if they were not talking to the same person. In the debriefing of the neutralization of SCP-1730, one source described how a rescued member of the Site-13 staff was able to identify a picture of 055 as a member of the Global Occult Coalition in their world. Aside from forming the Department of Paranormal Organization Review, 055 has apparently led considerable research into the existence of alternative realities, and is known to personally review anomalies that interact with other dimensions as they arise. Journal Entry The Fifth Overseer This is an odd one. Every source I have who was able to comment on the nature of the overseer they call Blackbird has described a frankly jovial individual with none of the cloak and dagger of the other members of the council. He's often described as friendly, outgoing, and remarkably personable. Despite this, there are some inconsistencies in his story. Sources indicated that while the Blackbird is very open to Inquisition, and likes to downplay the secrecy that is so common among the Foundation's highest order. He sits at the head of one of its most secret organizations, the Department of Paranormal Organization Review. This department maintains records and a history of other groups of interest, including the Church of the Broken God, the Serpent's Hand, the Children of the Scarlet King, and others. This is unusual as the Overseer has apparently never spoken about it on the record. Additionally, there are some sources who believe that the Overseer may suffer from multiple personality disorder, as some have described slight alterations to his character that are enough out of the ordinary to cause some concern. Some sources close to the Overseer have described feeling as if they're speaking to different people despite the face never changing. I find it to be odd. Moreover, there's a strange little story that gets told about a document recovered by the Chaos Insurgency a number of years ago. As the story goes, they happened upon a strange red disc, or part of one rather, that, when held against a mirror, opened a portal to another world. Inside that world, they found records of what had happened there, some sort of religious doomsday that had devastated the planet. But what was most interesting to them was a document detailing certain high-ranking members of the religious group that was that world's governing body. And wouldn't you know it, but there at the table is the Blackbird, plain as day. Isn't that something? Finding him is impossible. He doesn't appear to have any residence, 
nor does he have any apparent pattern of behavior that can be traced. Instead, I'm told he's one of those people who, if it's time for them to meet you, will come to you first. Ominous, but likely your best bet. End of entry. Lesson complete. For more orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation or watch these playlists.